fight it. Because how many of you know that the blood still works? Amen. God hasn't lost any power. Bless you. He hasn't lost any power. He's still God. Amen. Amen. And he loves each and every one of us. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to John, the 10th chapter. Thank you, Jesus. I do give honor to the pastor and his family, his church. Amen. And all churches represented here today. We see Walter's Chapel here today. And we thank God for you all coming out and support us as well. Amen. And all the other churches that I don't know the name of, we honor the Lord for you being here also. If you would turn with me to John the 10th chapter, we're going to read 9 through 11. And I'm going to use for a background subject, John 3, 16 and 17. Amen. John 10, 9 through 11, and it reads, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall, somebody say shall, shall. be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And John, the third chapter, 16 and 17 verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, that that the world through him might be saved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you tonight. God, we thank for hearts. God, we thank you for this revival. God, we thank you for your people that have assembled here tonight. And God, we just say thank you. In the midst of everything that's going on, God, we still have a praise on our lips, God. And we say thank you, God. We still praise you from our hearts, God. And we say thank you, God. And as we go into the word, God, we ask that you just take control, Lord, and let the Holy Ghost have its way. This we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. From these verses, I want to use for a subject. He came just for you. Jesus came just for all of us. All of us. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter where you came from. He came just for you. Jesus is saying here that I am that son and the gift that the father promised. I came just for you. See, my father looked down the line of town, line of time, and gave me to you because he saw that one day we all were going to need some help. We all have to believe. All of us have to do is just believe in me. He saw that we were going to be in a world where we needed some direction. We need some direction. He saw that we were going to need to be saved from destruction. A chance. We all needed a chance to have everlasting life. Life without end. Let's take note. He did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't send his son into the world to tell the world how bad it was. But he sent his son to give the world a way out. Thank you, Jesus. A way of escape. That through him, we all might be saved. Thank you, Jesus. If we can just imagine for a minute being in a burning building and the smoke is just so thick that you can't see your way out. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Thank you, Jesus. And you're looking for the door. And there appears a fireman that said, take me by the hand and I'll lead you out. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> or you might say, hear the fireman. And he said, come, follow me. I'll take you to safety. That's 
that's glorious news. That's glorious news. When you cannot see your way and somebody is reaching down their hand to help you. When you cannot see your way and you hear a voice say, follow me. What am I talking about? Jesus came into this world. He came into this dark world as a light and he said, come to me. Glory to God. He said, take my hand. I'll lead you on. Thank you, Lord. I'll, on God's directive, because he loved us so, Jesus came down through 40 and two generations. Some people say, well, what in the world did he go that route for? There were people, there were places, and well, there were things that had to be set in order. Before God came on, before Jesus came on the scene. See, a lot of times we don't wonder, we wonder why things don't happen at a particular time. But when you're doing the will of God, you have to remember it's not your way. It's God's way. All we need to do is fall in line. All we need to do is trust him. If we can trust the Lord, thank you, Jesus, and lean not unto our own understanding, God will give us strength to come through. Because why? He came just for you. Glory to God. People are still trying to figure out why did he come this way? But Jesus said, I came down from the Father not to do my will. Glory to God. Not to do his will. Not to do his will. But to do my Father's will. To do him that sent me. And so in the grand thing, grand scheme of things, he said, I am the door. He said, my page has flipped. But y'all hear me read it. <laughs> I am the door. You see, God loves you just that much. He takes time to see every one of your needs. And, and he reads your thoughts. And then he takes your needs and he reads your thoughts. And then he aligns them with his will. Glory to God. See, that's the reason why it takes so long sometimes. <laughs> because your little thoughts have to align with his will. Thank you, Jesus. And, and things have to happen. For you to get in line in God's will. And when his time comes, he works everything out. And then at the end of the day, you can look back and say, Lord, I didn't know it was going to work out that way. But I declare it worked out good. Why? Because it was his will to be done. He loved us so. Jesus is saying, when you believe in me, he said, I will guide your minds. Mm. Don't we need our minds Guide it sometimes. Yes. Not only will he guide your mind, but he'll guard your mind as well. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And not only will he guard your mind, and then he'll order your steps. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And he'll light the pathway. In other words, he'll make the way plain so you can see where you're going. Thank you, Lord. Because God knew there would come a time when you didn't know what to do. I know all of us have been in a situation where we come to a point in our life, Lord, I don't know what to do about this situation. I've tried this and I've tried that. Nothing is not working. But when you turn it over to God, and I mean rest in Him, and say, Lord, I need this to happen. Don't know how it's going to happen, but God, I'm going to rest in you. He will come through he will direct you. He will move people out of the way. He will put people in the way. And he will have his way. Thank you, Jesus. Because he knew there was a time that sometimes we're going to feel alone. But he sent his son. He sent a comforter. <laughs> when you're feeling all alone, you can call on Jesus. Glory be to God. And he'll come in and he'll comfort you. Well, how he's going to comfort me? He'll talk sweet to you. He said, you are my child. I've got you in the palm of my hand. He said, all the devils in hell can't pluck you out. That's sweet things. When you think you're all alone, God's got you right in the palm of his hand. Glory be to God. He knew from the very beginning that we would need a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Lord, glory to God. All our sins to bear. Glory to God. He knew that we would need direction because we are a lost people. Thank you, Jesus. He knew we would need a Savior. But in all that he knew, he 
tells us here about a thief. A thief. There's a thief out there called the devil. And he has a threefold mission to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That thief came to try to keep you from what the Father has prepared for you. How many of you know God has prepared good things for us? Good things for his people. Good things. Good things for his people. Thank you, Jesus. But the thief came to kill, steal, and to destroy. He prepared me. Jesus said, he prepared me. And he came that you might have life. You might have life. Not just existing. How many people walk around just existing? They get up. They breathe. They go through the day with no direction. But they got up. They breathe. Don't have no plan. No nothing. They just exist. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What does that mean? More than you can ask or think. More than you can ask or think. And he wants you to know tonight, I came just for you. Woo. You might say, I've been having a hard time, Lord. But I want you to know, Jesus is saying, I came just for you. Will you turn or loose your thoughts? Glory to God and elevate them to my thoughts. Why? Because I came just for you. You might say, I had a hard time, Lord. But I want you to know, he came just for you. And when we open up our hearts to him, and open up our minds to him, and allow him to speak to your very spirit, you will find out there's some good nuggets there. You will find out God will put people in your life to help you up. Because I often tell people, you never come across a person that you're going to not impart to them or they're going to impart in your life. You might say, I don't know about that. I met some strange people. I met some strange people, Pastor Moore. But I'm going to tell you something. Even people you think that they're strange, if you really notice what they bring into the table, God will show you that there's some good in that. Yes. See, there are some people that we call bad. But in every bad person still came from God. And there's some good in that person. But it's up to you to open up your hearts and open up your mind and deal with people on their levels. Thank you, Jesus. So that you can hear what the Lord has to offer. And if they're not important anything into you, then it's your duty to impart into them. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory to God. Just don't brush them off. Because this is one thing. It's a two-way street. God has allowed you to have his love. God has allowed you to have his mercy. God has allowed you to have his compassion. And it's not just for you. That compassion is to be shared. To be shared. If Jesus loved you, every one of us was born in sin. Am I right about it? Shape in iniquity. How dare you look at somebody else in sin? Turn up your nose like you are better than anybody else. If it had not been for the grace of God, that person could have been you. Glory to God. But because God his grace yes. and his mercy yes. and he shined down on you yes. and he reached way down and yes. picked you up. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. Then it's your duty hallelujah as a child of God yes. to look and lift somebody else up. Yes. It's your duty. It's your duty. Somebody told me one time you don't have to smile all the time. You don't have to smile all the time. But if God gave me a smile, why can't I smile? Who are you to tell me what to do with the gift that God gave me? That's right. Thank you, Jesus. See, while you are not talking to that person, I 
I'm smiling at that person. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. And when I smile at that person, it brings joy to that person. Sometimes you don't have to say a word. Right. But God will show up in your life to the extent that they will feel the love of God in your life. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you know we have a job to do? We have a job to do. I know you heard people say, I'm going to get there. I know you heard people when they say, I, I, I'm at the place in my life when I can pay all my bills with no problems. When you want to be there? Some of you might be already there. Thank you, Jesus. Some have a good portion of health and strength and they go to and fro wherever they want to go. But they would quickly tell you this. Now, this is the life. <laughs> How many of us are looking for that? This is the life. This is the life. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. That's right. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. We're all sheep. So what you trying to say? In God, we can have the good life. Thank you, God. We, we spend too much time looking at materialistic things. And I'm not against materialistic things at all. Because I believe Abraham was one of the richest men in the Bible. But Abraham had faith in God. That's right. What I'm saying is Abraham had stuff, but the stuff didn't have Abraham. Come on. Job had stuff, right. but the stuff didn't have Job. Because right. when he lost everything that he had, he said, naked I came into this world, right. and naked shall I return. Right. But I'm going to hold on to God. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. You got to make up your mind. That you're going to hold on to God regardless to what come or go. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> I came to give. And I came just for you. I am the light into this world. And whosoever believeth on me shall not abide in darkness. In other words, no one who has faith in me will stay in darkness. I want to say that again. No one, somebody say no one, that has faith in Jesus will stay in darkness. I want you to get that down in your spirit. Because if you have faith in Jesus, there is a way out. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. And when you have faith in him and you trust him and you listen to him, he'll bring you out every time. You might say, well, I've been, I've been believing for a long time, Pastor. But I want you to know, he came just for you. Amen. How much time are you spending with him? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. glory be to God. How much are you communing with him? <laughs> how much are you telling him how much you love him? Yeah. Glory to God. How much you adore him? How, how many times are you thanking for the unseen things? Glory to God. You, you thank him because, you know, your, your son didn't get in an accident. Right. But, but did you thank him because you didn't get in an accident? Glory be to God. See, some things God keep us from that we don't know nothing about. Right. His angels, glory to God, they never sleep. Woo. As a matter of fact, they're standing on command. Woo. Hallelujah. When you pray, hallelujah to God. When you pray, don't you know the angels are waiting for your request. Yes. Waiting for your request. For God to say, go take care of my child. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Angels on command. They're waiting when you pray to the Father. Lord, have mercy. He's waiting for you to call on his name. He's waiting for you to stop being so busy. He's waiting for you to give him some time. Come on. He came just for you. Lord, have mercy. Just for you. You will not be in the dark. No more stumbling around. No more stumbling around. And he left it on record. Hebrews, the, the second chapter, the 14th through the 17th verse. And it reads about we are people of flesh and blood. That is why Jesus came. Because of us. He died to destroy the devil who had power over death. But he also died to rescue all of us who live 
come each day in the fear of dying. Jesus clearly did not come to help the angels. He came to help us. But he did come to help Abraham's seed and Abraham's descendants. He had to come as one of us because he came in fleshly form. So he could serve God as a merciful and faithful high priest and sacrifice himself for the forgiving of our sins. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And now that Jesus has suffered and was tempted, he can help anyone who have any kind of problem. Yes. Why? Because he walked this earth. He saw what was going on. He lived through what was going on. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I came just for you. God saw that we was going to need a pick-me-up sometime. The angels even called Jesus good tidings of great joy, yes. which shall be for all people. Thank you, God. Thank you. Great joy. Good tidings of great joy. Yes. What are you talking about? Good news. That's for everybody. Yes. Good news yes. for everybody. Yes. It's not for you to just reckon it to yourself. But that good news is for you to share. Once God gives you the news, you can tell the story. We call it testimony. You tell the story of how God has brought you through. But you can't tell the testimony until you've been through a test. Don't die in the middle of your test. Go on through to the other side so you can have a testimony. There's a songwriter called James Cleveland that said God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. Yes. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He'll never, ever come short of his word. Do y'all believe that today? Yes. He will never, ever come short of his word. So don't say yourself short. He came just for you. You might say, well, he came for everybody else. But see, salvation is a personal thing. We have to say, he, he came just for me. And, and others will say, well, what about me? And then you tell, he came just for you too. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get you to see is, you have to have that relationship with him. Where you can say, he came just for me. I am a living testimony that he came just for me. Thank you, Jesus. You are the reason. That he came. He came that you might have life. You're the reason that he came. He said I was anointed to preach the gospel. To the poor. The poor in spirit. He came just for you. He said I came to heal. The broken hearted. How many of you have been broken hearted. In your life. He came just for you. He said I came to deliver. The captives. Announce freedom. To the prisoners. I want you to know you've been set free. <laughs> Why? Because he came just for you. He said, and I bought free favor from God with me. Lord, have mercy. Anytime you have Jesus, you got favor. You have favor. You have favor. People are going to be jealous, but walk in your faith. People are going to misunderstand you, but walk in your faith. Whatever God has given you, walk in the liberty which God has given yes, you. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I came to recover the sight of the blind. Yes. I want to ask you, who stole your sight? Right. Who stole your positive outlook on life? Yes. Jesus said, I came to recover yes. the sight of the blind. Yes. He said, I came to set at liberty those that are bruised. Yes. Those that have been suffered you, by the hands of other people. By the words of other people. He said, I came to set you free. Those that have been downtrodden. Those that have been bullied in school. He said, I came to set you free. Yes. Some people have been bullied on the job. He said, I came to set you free. Yes. Those that have been crushed. Some people have been crushed. They call it low self-esteem. But Jesus said, I came. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. To set you free. Yes. I know you've been bruised. I know you've been broke down. Broke down by calamity. Break, broke down by tragic things that have happened in your life. 
But Jesus said, I came, thank you, Lord, just for you. To let you know this is your time. I came just for you. Songwriter wrote, I was sinking deep in sea. Far from the peace for sure. Lord, have mercy. Very deeply stained within. Seeking to rise no more. But the master. But the master. But the master of the sea. <laughs> Glory to God. Heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. The love of Jesus lifted me. Thank you, Jesus. When nothing else could help. When mama couldn't help. When daddy couldn't help. When my best friend couldn't help. When your boyfriend couldn't help. When your girlfriend couldn't help. Jesus lifted me. Thank you, Jesus. I came to give you access to the Father by one spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I came so you could call on him. You can call on him in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. You don't have to worry because he's not sleeping in. <laughs> Glory to God. You can call on him in the noonday. You don't have to worry because he don't take no lunch breaks. You can call on him in the evenings. Thank you, Jesus. Or in the midnight hour. Because the Bible tells me he never sleep nor slumber. So when you can't sleep, call on him. He's waiting with an open ear. He's waiting just to hear your cry. I came for you to believe. And I came for you to have these benefits. Just know Jesus came just for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus came just for you. If you are able, stand to your feet. Glory to God. And give God some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some glory. reminder, God, that you came just for us. God, we say thank you. We give you glory and we give you praise right now. Oh God, for this revival week, God. Oh God, we asking you right now to continue to shower down your love among your people, God. Bring in, God, those that are not saved, God. We're seeking the lost, God. We're asking you to bring them in, Lord. Bring them in, Lord. Yes, sir. And help us, God, as we leave this place, God, to show love, the kind of love that you have, the kind of love that you give, Lord. Oh, God, search our hearts, whatever you find that should not be. God, we ask that you just take it out. Strengthen us in the name of Jesus. God, have your way in our lives, that even when we walk, that men and women can see Christ in our lives. Oh, God, we thank you. Wherever we go, God, in the grocery store, let them see you, God. Thank you, Jesus. In the malls, let them see you, God. In the schools, let them see you, God. Everywhere we go, God. In the courthouse, let them see you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. And God bless the absent part of the church. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless God. Help God. Strengthen God. In the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives. That we may go forth. And we'll give you the glory. And we'll give you the honor. These and all other blessings. We ask in your precious name. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you. We turn it to the hands of Pastor.